Welcome to the App Clinic at the brand new time of 10.30 a.m. Mountain View time. Absolutely. Um, my name's Rado Meyer. And I'm still asleep. <laughs> but if I were awake, I would be Ian Nee Lewis. Excellent. And uh, today we're going to take a look at photography and camera apps in the App Clinic. Uh, we've got a good range of apps to look at. In fact, these are them. We've got IM, PixArt, Glimmer, and Camera Zoom FX. Now, I've really been uh, looking forward to these, Rayto, because I know we're both photographers, or I, I should say you're a photographer, and I own a camera. <laughs> I think it's probably fair to say I also own a camera. Actually, our uh, erstwhile engineer, uh, Mr. Daniel Pham, is probably, I think, I think it's fair to say a photographer. That's quite true. He takes all the pictures for our, uh, our promotional videos. That's true, and in fact, um, I was so confident in his ability that the uh, photos that we're going to look at, I actually sent him around uh, this morning with our uh, demo device to take some photos of stuff, so we would have some uh, decent examples. Excellent. Of people. So, and uh, just to be clear, our dem demo device today is a Galaxy Nexus. It is right? indeed, yes. All right. Hey, uh, I don't want to disappoint you guys, but uh, I really just took photos of the studio, the so maybe studio. the viewers will have... Um, you know, a good time looking at some behind the scenes photos of you know how how messy it really is in here. All right. Well, I assume that they're going to be highly artistic and uh, and well filtered um, photos of our studio. So uh, I guess right. we should uh, I guess we should kick off. So let's uh, do it. As per usual, we're going to go through uh, each of the apps, um, give them sort of a five two to five minute overview uh, before having a look at what we think are the keys to making a really great camera and photography app and some of uh, some links to some developer resources that should help you to be able to take your app to that next level. Um, so let's start off with uh, IM. Um, and this is a team that has actually worked with, uh, with some of our uh, developer advocates over in uh, London. I think uh, Rich Hindman, or Hindman, however we're deciding to say his name today, has, uh, has been working with these guys and giving them some advice. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see how it works. Absolutely. By the way, I noticed the QR codes are back. Check that out. Indeed, they never Someone left. always uh, complains when we don't have the QR codes. This is true. Yeah. I'm um, getting used to it now. Yeah, I noticed that our uh, chroma keying is slightly off as well, so we don't have uh, quite the background that we should there. But um, oh, is that what happened? I thought maybe you just chose to to leave it Get off? rid of the no, well, maybe because we Roman was way. you know that's uh, true. But Roman is a trendsetter, um, and you know I don't think I'm quite. It, up to it's that true. Level. We are always following Roman. In fact, mm -hmm. all I did, you know, so I did the uh, the intro video for that's today. Done, by the way, thank you. It's all, um, it's all Roman. It's all, all <laughs> Roman's artwork. Excellent. Um, so if we can switch to the uh, to the phone shot, um, we'll take a look at. See now, there you go. Yeah. Um, so this is this is M. So we've, uh, as you can see, folks, we have uh, removed the backwards facing camera and we're doing HDMI. Oh, chroma keying is almost right. No, nope. not going to work. Um, Sorry, guys. I'm trying. That's all right. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, let you, uh, we'll let you continue to do that. So, but what you've got up here is uh, IM. So what it is is basically what you'd expect. It's uh, an app which lets you take photographs, uh, lets you apply filters to them, and uh, has a community for sharing those photos with your friends. Um, I think particularly on Twitter and Facebook. Um, it's, it's got the links for that directly. Um, so you can see here your, your front page is basically what you would expect. It's uh, sort of a, a rolling list view of, uh, of all of the photos that your friends have taken. Uh, and one of the things which uh, which they've done quite well here is they've got these uh, tabs, these tab labels that you can see here. Yeah. Um, and so that, you know, as people are tagging them, you can go, oh, actually, I'd be interested to see more photos from San Benedetto del Toronto. You click that, and it will take you to a, a bunch of other things, show you on a map where it's at, and all the other photos. Oh, that's very that. cool. Yeah. I quite like that. So yeah. this this passes a big test of mine, which is, you know, can you get lost in the app? Are you going to spend a lot of time just going, oh, cool, I want to see more of those sorts of photos or right. from those sorts of people? Uh, one of the really key features of this app, which I really wanted to highlight, is that they've done a really good job on the UI of the actual picture display. And you can see here they've got this heterogeneous uh, list view, uh, or grid view, I suppose it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can see here we've got different sized images all coming together to create something which is uh, quite compelling uh, to look at. And again, you can sort of click through to each of right. these. Now, this isn't uh, a particularly well accelerated list view, though. It feels no, it's a, little a little janky. janky. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's one thing. So, you know, Dan Galpin's actually been uh, working for about a year on, uh, on some new techniques for doing faster list view rendering for photos. Um, and hopefully, one of these days, he'll actually get that. Released. Yeah. Well, this is a nice shot. This is the uh, the Googleplex. Although it says right. Googleplex 46, it's not. It's Googleplex 44. Right. And and in fact, uh, we are in the room just above the honeycomb. That's right. Just here. We're in here. 
So yeah. you can wave to us. If you're here at the right time, we would love to have people holding signs outside the window. Uh, that yeah. would be kind of cool. We're on the second floor, so that would be insanely cool if they were right outside the window. What? You think our fans don't own ladders? Do you think they don't have the dedication it takes? Do you I think assume they own jetpacks. don't have fans? Hmm. Mm. That could be a problem. So anyway. So I'll tell you, though, the first thing that strikes me about this app mm -hmm. uh, is this button down here. Mm. Um, it looks like maybe that's how I'm going to take a picture. It is. OK. And you can see, I, I think if you're on a different phone, uh, mm -hmm. maybe a Galaxy S2 or something, yeah. you would think this is a pretty cool design. Once you get onto one of these no button phones, mm. you realize this is actually kind of a bad idea. It's very uh, close, very, very yeah. close to your home button. It's very close to the home button. It's very similar to the action that you're going to use mm. to bring Google up Google Now. now. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that you can screw up. Mm -hmm. with the camera button here. And that's, as we've mentioned before, that's one of the reasons that we sort of discourage tabs on the bottom. Uh, because you know you can very easily get mixed up with that bottom row of buttons. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, And of course, they do also have a menu button down and, here. And this is, is the confusing thing, because they have uh, something which looks a lot like an action bar, which mm -hmm. has a menu button. And if you click that, you do get uh, an overflow menu. but. And so they've done this thing where uh, you've still got the menu button, and that brings up. You know, I, I the wonder drop if they're. Down. I wonder if they're using something like Action Bar Sherlock, Could and be. then they're not setting the API level high enough because yeah. we actually don't document this correctly. Um, it, it's changed since the docs were released, so you can't absolutely guarantee that that thing will go away until mm. your API, li API level is 15. Yeah, right. Uh, and we had originally set 11. Okay. Yeah. So make sure it's uh, up to. A th yeah, I thought 14, but let's make it 15 and just be safe. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing. You can get rid of that really easily, because um, it'll come back um, for devices which, uh, which don't have, um, you know, which do have a hard uh, menu button. OK. Um, so the other uh, call out that I wanted to mention here um, is that they have implemented the draw pattern. I'm pretty sure they're aware that mm -hmm. this isn't quite the right draw pattern, but I wanted to put it out there for other people who may <coughs> be watching. Yeah. So this is following sort of that prototype G plus uh, model. Mm -hmm. where the action bar all shifts across. And you can see that here, so everything's moved across. Uh, the right model is actually the way YouTube does it, which is that your action bar is, is consistent. So all of, the, oops, all of the stuff here along your action bar, this should stay here um, no matter what. Um, and rather ha than having sort of a draw icon, you would have your application icon or logo with an upper affordance. Mm -hmm. And so they're clicking that will then leave everything here as it is and then just have this side part here slide out. So in the same way, but still having the action bar along the top. Um, and I think, you know, so that's, that's kind of the right way to do it. And that's all uh, listed in the design patterns uh, mm -hmm. on Android Design. Yeah, and again, it's not that these guys got it wrong. It's that there wasn't a, a design yeah. pattern, and now <laughs> there is. So. They, they followed an example, which uh, turns out we decided wasn't quite the right example. Um, all right. So. Now, I'll tell you, this is driving me crazy, because yeah. uh, I'll tell you, so we've got, we have two options. You can scoot over, or we can move the camera. I can scoot. Oh, OK. Well, Rito does not want to move the camera. Leave the camera alone, Ian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I fixed it last week, and now it's back yeah, on guys, not fixed again. Please don't touch my stuff. All righty. <laughs> um, so otherwise, you know, things things here work as you'd expect. You have the ability to uh, to like. Nice little animation comes up there. You can mm -hmm. add comments. You know, they've got a pretty custom UI here with their own custom buttons, but it's consistent throughout. There's a color scheming. There's a, a design ethos here, which. I think works. It passes yeah. the, is it different? Yes. Does it still look good? Yes. Uh, let's, let's try the what share here. Probably would have liked to see, you know, so what, what is. Standard share intent. That's yes. Nice. Probably would have liked to see the actual share button. Um, yeah, that's, that's you know, that's something that I think people are getting used to. And mm. as we use that more, it, it becomes a, a consistent way to say, I want to share something uh, that's agnostic to services or you know what's hot this way. I mean, mm. you know, if it, I think we've said it before, if this phone had been designed five years ago, everybody would have MySpace buttons. Absolutely. And and we'd all feel like fools, wouldn't we? Um, wouldn't the other we? thing is, what is flag? I uh, think for inappropriate things. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't, gotcha. Don't hit flag okay. it for nudity. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that, there is a naked Android right there. All right. <laughs> yeah, and I love this. Um, the. Uh, the animation that you got to work that yeah, I so you, uh, this can't. is the problem when you have uh, touch targets which are less than forty eight pixels. People uh, have trouble hitting them. Small fingered Rato wins again. Boy. So the only thing that I sort of miss is I feel like I'd like to see that carried out mm -hmm. everywhere. Sure. Um, it's it's always so sad when you see a beautiful user interface 
and it's been lovingly crafted. And then you get to the point where like the world ends and everything stops, and you realize they ran out of time, and it's just a normal Android system dialogue. Mm, mm. And it's not just Android that does this. You know, I've got plenty of of apps on my PC that do this, but I think that. You know, for especially for an app like this that's all about beauty, it's worth taking the extra time to make sure that the entire interface follows whatever design theme you've chosen, whether that's the stock Android design or something completely different. All right, so let's have a, a quick look at the uh, phone taking functionality before uh, moving on. Um, so we'll start using the camera because otherwise it starts to get a little bit confusing. Um, oh, yeah, it does work. Nice. So oh wow, that's awesome. Boom. Yep. That's a winner. That's your new... Uh, yeah, that's new, my, my new album cover. Absolutely. Um, so I guess that's a tick. Yep. Sure. No, it's just a mole. <laughs> and uh, so we can go through here and apply all of the uh, the usual hipster filters. Let's see if we can make you even more jaundiced, because I think that's kind of awesome. There we go. Yeah. That's a win. So kind of the what you would expect, except that it kind of stopped there. Um, so that's a bug. Let's uh, let's report that to the guys so that they. Uh, so that they could be any feedback. number of things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what what build are you running on this? Uh, whatever the latest um, public so release stock build retail? is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's let's move on. Um, so that's that's uh, I am. A uh, really awesome. popular. I've got a lot of great comments uh, on the moderator link uh, for that one. So uh, we will be returning to this um, later on when we look at the prescriptions for a great app. But great. definitely a good start. Let's take a look at Pixar. Let's. Boom, mean, Pixar. All right, let's open that up. So right hmm. off the bat, we get the follow us on Twitter. So this doesn't come up every time um, the activity launches, but it comes up often enough to be a pain, um, particularly because all you have there is a follow button. And you can hit back to, uh, to, to cancel it. But you know, we're kind of anti-dialogues to begin with. Right. And we're kind of anti-forcing people to do things um, you know, to, to help verify your own brand. You know, come, go rate me in the store, five stars, that sort of thing, and follow us on Twitter. By all means, have a Twitter account which people can follow for news, but sort of trying to force them to do so. It's kind of um, overly attached girlfriend meme. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. Follow me? No, this isn't cool. Like people will find it, make it easy for them to do it, but uh, you know, you don't need quite that much validation, I think. Yeah, actually, yeah, it is. It is a little desperate. Um, but okay, so they've got this uh, nice, like, what do you call this? Like a, a city UI or a, some guess, sort yeah. of so urban UI, area UI, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting pattern. Uh, I probably would have maybe taken out some of these. It makes it uh, makes know. it kind of busy. There's a lot going on. Yeah, there. Uh, reminds but me a little of uh, it's a shop. That's yeah. interesting. Uh, but in general, really nice. I yeah. mean, the, the colors are nice and bright. Look, right? and yeah. Okay, so what can you do with Pixar? What can you do? So let's have a let's have a flick through. So basically, it's a uh, you have data. That's just that's just lies. Um, so basically, it's a combination of a few different kinds of camera apps. So you can take your photos and uh, apply your hipster filters. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, which we will do once again. Let's try and get. Uh, let's get Dan. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so you can take your photos and apply your hipster filters as you would uh, as you would normally expect. And it's got a good selection of, of you know, different standard things. And you can actually do quite a lot here in terms of applying uh, different kinds of presets eventually, maybe. It does seem to be taking a long time, but I do like their, uh, their little rotating status bar. Yeah. Well, and this is one of those things, too, where they're obviously not using the stock Android, mm. or, but but it is part of their branding. Exactly. And you know, I, I know we harp on this a lot, but we get this question a lot. You know, people will bring us an app that uses some. Let, let's call it spade a spade. Sometimes they'll pull in assets directly from the iPhone or yeah. Windows Mobile, and they'll say, "Well, that's just the way our designers like it." And I think that's not really cool. I mean, first off, it's not Android, but second off, it, it's not yours. It's somebody <laughs> else's stuff. That's right. But when you take something that Android provides and then make it completely yours, so it works exactly the same. It has a little cycling mm -hmm. color so that you know what's going on. But 
has your branding in it, I think mm. that's great. Yeah, I wish that more apps would do that. Absolutely, and then you get the advantage of having that consistency across all the versions of your app uh, and everything else. Um, now, we also have the very consistent, t you know, this should be a built-in control right now, the, the hipster be, right? strip. <laughs> Um, and they've actually got like a bunch of different ones. So they've got the standard FX, which you're applying there, and you can you can actually modify the uh, the degree of each of these, which is nice as well. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, apply that. And I think you can then go through and apply a bunch of different kinds of filters. So they've got the distortion yeah. filters. They've got you know all of all of those different things. I think it's really interesting that compared to some of the other apps we've looked at, mm. uh, this app is really slow mm. at applying filters. And I wonder if it's because they're not taking advantage of acceleration. You know, in cool. uh, in Android, uh, especially in Honeycomb and above, you can use RenderScript or you can use the GPU to accelerate this sort of thing. And this mm. is most of these filters just boil down to convolutions of one kind or another. So yeah. you can uh, and, and Java is just not good at convolutions at all. Its memory layout is wrong. Mm. It doesn't have access to uh, SIMD floating point instructions. Uh, I don't even think it has access to non-strict floating point instructions, which means you're going to be abiding by IEEE standards and getting into all sorts of performance problems. So you really, really, really don't want to write your uh, your filter code in Java or even in just generic C++. You really want to be using Neon uh, or, for the best compatibility, actually just write it in OpenGL. Yeah, absolutely. So let's um, we'll, we'll click through. So we've all seen this sort of thing beforehand. So if you hit OK, then you have a bunch of options. You can either upload it to PixArt, save it to the SD card, tweet it, export it, a whole bunch of things. Now. Personally, I would kind of prefer if it just did something sensible by default, maybe save it to the SD card, and then take me back to a page where it just displays all the things that I've saved and allow me to share or add to a timeline or whatever from there, uh, yeah. rather than asking for this explicit thing. Well, and this it seems like a lot of people get this wrong. In a mobile app, and, and Reto, you had a great talk about this at Google I.O., you have the opportunity to make your app work like magic. Forget about saving and loading and knowing what file paths are and, and all sorts of things like that. If you look at good mobile apps, they just always work. Yeah. They do what the user probably wants, and they give the user a way to back out if it's not what they wanted. So it shouldn't be about saving. It should be about deleting mm -hmm. things that have already been saved because yeah. everything gets saved. Exactly. You, you, know, you don't have this problem anymore where you've got a totally, really, really limited uh, amount of storage and one or two extra photos is going to kill you. You can take a lot of photos before it's a problem. Yeah. You know, back in the day where, you know, back in the DOS days, the only thing you had to identify a file was its file name and its extension. And so then you had to create these complex hierarchical folder structures in order to be able to find anything. So mm -hmm. you're basically creating metadata out of your file system. These days, you can use the metadata. You can display the photos. You can do all I, of that sort of I stuff. I dare say almost no one knows or cares what the file names are for their photos now. Exactly. Particularly not on your uh, on your mobile where. See, this is all a little bit confusing. I've already saved it, and it just took me back here. Um, so I'm just going to yeah. hit close and assume that it's kept it somewhere. Good luck. Yeah. Um, so then it takes us back to the photos. So we can continue taking photos or hit okay. back again. So they've done their own kind of camera view too. They have. Yeah. Uh, so that one I'm not. From scratch. Yeah, I'm. I'm not as excited about this just because I feel like um, this isn't quite as much their branding. I mean, it, I. I look at these icons and I'm like, yeah, I think I've seen those somewhere before. Yeah, and they're really small. And they really are. They're not particularly high res either. I can see a little bit of uh, of mess around some of the vector art. Well, Galaxy Nexus um, is is always a good test case for finding out if you've got the right resources because it's a 720p phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and same thing for uh, I think Galaxy S3, Galaxy S2 are the, the same resolution. Um, so it's an extremely high resolution display. And if you're just thinking to yourself, oh, these, these things look good on a four-inch display, that's not always true yeah. if you're on this one of these XHDPI devices. Uh, so the other thing I want to point out real quick is that um, you're hiding my status bar, which is a pain, because we may have been going on for 15 minutes about this app, and I don't know. Um, so please don't. Please, please, I beg of you, do not hide my status bar. I want to know what time it is. I want to see my emails coming in. That is actually more important than your app. If you must hide the status bar, at least let me tap and Something get it back. Something to get it back, yeah. Like it's right. fine if you've got like a, a gallery view and I want to look at my photos in full screen and flick through it. Sure, but mm -hmm. you know, give me that tap ability to get things back. A yeah, um, couple apps that do this really well are uh, the e-readers. So uh, Google Play Books, uh, Amazon Kindle, mm. both have really good status bar hiding and showing functionality. Yeah. 
I'm going to see if we can get data. So we, we mm -hmm. can't. Oh, well, okay. So we've got some here. So we can see this is the community here. aspect of it. Um, this is this is less uh, less janky in terms of the scroll, but. Um, we're still seeing a reasonable amount of time taken to load each of the pictures here. Well, it's tough to get around that, right? Because we've got we've got network latency, we've got the decoding. Mm. Um, you know, these are probably not small bitmaps. Well, and that's so. kind of the pr the question here is like you know, and this and, is and you can see actually once yeah, once so things end up in cache, yeah, it's keeping them there, which is nice. I, I think that of of the apps I've looked at, these these guys are doing exactly the right thing. I mean, so. you can't. You can't, uh, you know, overcome the laws of physics, oh, but really, or, or are you just not trying hard enough? Yeah, well, they're they're trying pretty hard actually. <laughs> um, this no, it does look it, pretty good. And it, it's very hard to see test, on uh, nice. on the video on YouTube, uh, but this is an extremely smooth scrolling experience. Yeah. the flinging feels just right. Yeah, it's got the right physics. It's so. yeah, it's all good. Um, so yeah, bravo. And you click through, and so this is a good experience. You know, you're swiping, swipe left, right, and you can see here the physics are right. It's mm -hmm. it's moving at the same speed as my finger, but then I can just do a quick flick, and it it feels about right. Um, so they've done yeah. a good job. And, uh, and they've got the the pinch to zoom, and then it's always uh, an interesting question: What do you do once you've pinched to mm, zoom? Get to the edge. Um, but this seems fine. I like that. I, yeah. I like the idea of once I get to the edge of the picture, as long as I'm able to take I it back and, and undo my swipe across, I think that's the right approach. I, I'm actually wondering if there's any chance that these guys are actually using Dan Galpin's library because it does exactly this. <laughs> it has possibly. exactly this or Dan's behavior. Maybe seen this and used it as a basis. Quite but, possibly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that these guys are doing everything right as far as. Uh, the physics there are a little bit. Yeah, it gets a little funny once you're uh, bouncing off the edge. Whee! Whee! It's too much fun for this time of day. Um, and again, we've kind of got the. So this is interesting. So now we've got the uh, the menu button on the action bar here, mm -hmm. but they've still got the legacy button down here, and that does absolutely nothing. So that's now confusing because it's ambiguous. Um, yeah. You know. So at the very least, I mean, really, the right solution here is get rid of this. Uh, set mm -hmm. your target SDK to uh, 15. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the very least, set it, it to 16 be. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It should always be the latest version. That's a good right. tip for you guys as well. Is always target the latest SDK. Um, there's really mm -hmm. no reason not to avoid well, your app. Well, the, the only possible reason not to is if you have no confidence that your app works on the latest SDK mm -hmm. and you're unable to test on any new device or, or new emulator. emulator. Yeah. So. I would have sympathy with, let's say, hardcore video apps hmm, sure. um, that are trying to do streaming that's only been supported recently yeah. um, and is still a little buggy. <laughs> but <laughs> in general, that. your UI should should support the latest SDK. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's jump out of this because uh, I'm not actually sure how much time we've spent. But uh, let's have a look at uh, at Glimmer. Uh, so Glimmer is a little bit different. This is not uh, your sort of standard camera replacement app. This is uh, actually an app to browse uh, Flickr. Um, so uh, in terms of functionality, much more simplistic here. You basically um, you know, you sign into your Flickr account, and then you can scroll through all of the pictures. Nice. What does Daniel Pham have to say about racers? <laughs> <laughs> you guys like that, right? Oh, oh well, yeah. Daniel. It looks like you know how to party. Yeah, this, that was actually at I.O. last year. Um, not this year, but uh, that's actually Dave Right, because this year it was train. Yeah, Nobody I, was partying. I was close <laughs> enough to Dave Navarro's leg to almost reach out and grab him. But uh, I decided that was probably not a good idea. You decided that that would probably be a problem considering the restraining order. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, so for those of you who didn't make it to I.O., this is what it looked feast like. your eyes on some of these shots. That's Mr. Galpin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, without his beard. Beardless Galpin. Yeah. That's a, a little scary. It is. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the master is having a party tonight. <laughs> but uh, overall, it's a nice effect. Again, you've got the nice smooth swiping between uh, between items. You've got the standard action bar along the top here, which behaves in the way that it should. You've got the refresh uh, icon, which works in place. Again, probably no need for an explicit refresh as an a, a primary action, just because. The photos aren't going to be updating that quickly. You can probably get away with coming up with some sort of sensible refresh model. Now, you know what I love about this app? Please. This page right here. Mm. This is exactly what a photo-oriented list view should look like. Look at this. Yeah, they've, right. they've done a, a all great images. job. It's all yeah. images. Uh, they've overlaid text that looks nice. It's big enough. It's uh, readable. You know. Now, one thing that I haven't seen, I haven't seen any photo that is just really, really bad. 
for for tax. Well, there's there's one. Yeah. Um, but you can but see, you can see they've uh, yeah they've yeah. overlaid some. Uh, could be a little darker on this one, but yeah, exactly. And that's that's the whole idea really yeah, is you exactly. you make the photo everything. Don't don't put you know little drop shadows behind it. Mm -hmm. Don't put you know bars between it. Don't shrink the photo down so it's <laughs> thumbnail size. Yeah. This just looks beautiful. Exactly. I mean, there's all kinds of things here, and you, you straight away you, you can see where like you know you can tell from a photo even from a relatively small por portion of it whether it's something you're going to be interested in exploring yeah. more of. And I think they've done a, a great job there. The only disappointing thing is it it feels like their caching isn't quite as good as the last. No, app you can see here as soon as you sort of get more than sort of half a swipe beyond the page you're looking at, you've you've got the white screen. That is understandable though. I mean, the the view pager is sort of set up to do that mm. and you have to really go out of your way to do cache management um, if you're if you want to serve lots and lots of images very yeah. quickly I mean one thing you can do as well which um, you know maybe uh, maybe an issue here is make sure that you're downloading different sized images as well so obviously you're going to have the double hit if you click on it and then you have to download the full size image but at least you're dealing with a smaller memory footprint um, faster downloads faster load times those sorts yeah. of things now right after that, all of a sudden, I'm sort of ah, disappointed you're because back into uh, text mode. Right, right. That's a shame. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is this is for your Flickr groups, I guess. Yes. And obviously, the um, the photos are maybe less important. But I would argue that, I mean, if it were LinkedIn, I'd be like, yeah, photos, whatever. Sure. It's Flickr. It's Flickr. There, you're exactly. not there for anything else. Exactly. So it feels like you could do the same thing here, where you're just taking that uh, that image associated with the group, make that your full background, and then maybe because there's more text and it's more important, you you know overlay more of that on top of the text. But when you've got images, like you know, look at the way magazines work, right? Like the big advantage of magazines is that you've got you know rich color, full full color, and with apps like this, if you have the pictures, use them. The pictures Absolutely. are awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so this is this is looking pretty good. Um, we, we don't have the hipster filters to go through, so uh, I think. Maybe we'll move on to the uh, to the next app, um, the last one which we're going to look at today, which camera is uh, zoom. camera zoom effects. Um, so this is uh, again sort of so this is just your hipster filters. Uh, it's locked into mm -hmm. landscape view, which uh, we decided to leave this way to kind of prove a point, which is I don't always want to take my photos in landscape view. Um, True. So you know your, your UI, particularly uh, you can see here, this is basically an entirely a custom camera UI. They've drawn all of that themselves. Right. So there's really no reason here why they can't rotate the uh, the assets, right? Before Absolutely. And even these days, like I remember back in the days of Android 1.1, you uh, you had to take photos in landscape mode because mm -hmm. uh, there was no way of knowing what orientation the camera was at. Um, that's, that changed a long time ago now. So you can actually query the device to find out what the orientation of the camera is and, and rotate things so that they're sort of in the right aspect ratio and perspective. It's also worth asking yourself if you really, really need to do a custom camera view because yeah. whenever you duplicate system functionality, you risk looking out of date once mm. the system updates. And in particular, you're going to miss out on any brand new functionality yeah, that absolutely. the system gives you. Yeah. Now, for this, you know, maybe maybe they've got some really cool camera stuff going on. Um, the problem is that a lot of the coolest camera technology in Android is being supplied by OEM libraries. So you may be missing out on something really, really slick if you completely override the camera. That's interesting. If I hit front facing, it doesn't do anything. So that may be a bug. Uh, yeah. Well, that's that's what you get, right? It's certainly freezing. Um, did uh, yeah? Did it just freeze? Do you think? Or no, it's back. It just okay. seems to take a while. Um, so the only reason I can think of that you'd want to build a custom camera um, and and do the preview yourself is if you really need to do uh, live preview. So do these mm. guys do live preview? I believe that they do, yeah. If you, okay. hit the, uh, if you start it up and hit the effects button, um, I believe you're able to apply. OK. Uh, let's have a look. Um, all right, let's see. So this Maybe this is coloring or? Random effects. All right. Uh, oh, here, vignette. Vignette's yeah, always good. Um, no, okay, there you yeah. go. So, so they're applying that in real time. You can see that on the edge there. Right. Um, but you'll notice that a lot of the effects that you want are actually disabled mm. in, in, the, in the real, real time, time mode. mode. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't surprising. It's actually um, 
in ICS, we improve things, and in Jelly Bean, we improve them even more. I think there's one extra step that, that the GL team is talking about. The, um, but we've systematically been reducing the number of operations that it takes to do a live preview mm -hmm. with effects. So originally, it was extremely tedious. Um, and you had to bring things through Java. Mm -hmm. um, now there's a single copy involved um, if you're doing the uh, GPU acceleration on your effects. Mm -hmm. And in the future, at some point, uh, we don't know exactly when, but the team thinks that they can get that down to zero copies. So you'll awesome. be able to go directly from the camera to the GPU to whatever without passing through user mode code at all. Yeah, that's excellent. And yeah. In fact, uh, the app which I've seen which probably does the most intensive real-time uh, effects is, I think, Paper Camera. They do a pretty good job of this. Yeah, they, they really do. Most of their, uh, their effects at, at runtime, which is kind of nice. Yep. And they've, they've done a lot of work to make that successful. I'm not surprised. Um, so that's, that's the, basically the way this app works. And it's got all of the, uh, the standard filters that you'd expect. And you can apply them to photos either from the camera or from, uh, from your gallery as well, which is nice. Um, mm -hmm. There's no sort of community uh, you know, picture viewing, sharing functionality built in, at least not that I could find. Um, that's a shame, because the share intent is really, really easy to do. And it works well for photos. Well, share they've got. So they've got the, the standard share intent. Oh, OK. Item. So you're just saying that they don't hook into a exactly. like There's the no, Flickr Like client. I started up for the first time, and I can't flick through and look at other mm -hmm. photos that people have taken and shared and that sort of thing, which makes uh, makes app like uh, Instagram uh, a, a big part of that. You know, the I'm still on so the fence about that. Because yeah. I, uh, on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Every time I pick up an app like that, it's really cool. On the other hand, I'm like, well, gee, you know, don't I have social networks for that? Yeah, it's true. It's true. But uh, you know, I kind of like the, the combination, particularly if it's not, you know, if, if the community is, is really simplified. So it's mm -hmm. not about anything other than taking a photo and letting other people see it. Um, yeah. Because then you kind of get that experience of being able to, to you know, interact and share with people who you know, are using the same app, taking the same sorts of photos. I think it adds something to it. I think you're right. Uh, OK, cool. So that's, let's see. And again, we're hiding the status bar. Please stop hiding yeah, the status bar. I beg you. Yeah, just make sure you have a way to get it back. That's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Because here's the thing. Let's say I am completely immersed in your app. And let's say I'm also an adult with responsibilities. If I can get back to the status bar, I can find out what time it is. Mm -hmm. I can respond to a notification. I can check my calendar. I can do all these things. If not, then I have to leave your app any time my phone beeps, <laughs> which is annoying. Yeah, because absolutely. some notifications I literally do not care about, yeah. but I don't know until I've looked at the status bar. That's right. And you know, if you're doing a show like this, you need to know what time it is to see if you're massively over time, which we always we're not. are. Um, no. But at least we're not actually past the end time of our show yet, which is which that's is quite nice. true. So uh, let's have a look. So we've had I've been actively sabotaging the show as we go on. Oh, that's you're, so you're fun. carefully, yeah. Okay, let's let's talk about <laughs> both what, sabotaging. What are the prescriptions for camera apps? Indeed. So this is uh, these are the things that we're looking for. Having uh, browsed through a bunch of these apps, the the things that we found which makes them good. You know, we always say that uh, you can't contradict the uh, the design guide, mm -hmm. uh, and that certainly still holds true here. But I think. One additional thing uh, that we want to note is that it should really look good. I mean, mm -hmm. these, these are apps which are targeted at people who like the way things look. Photographers, design folks, hipsters. It's really important that you create something that's immediately appealing. And, and you could see that at the beginning when I showed you the, uh, the feature graphics. And I meant to point it out at the time, but completely forgot to. They all have feature graphics. Mm -hmm. They're all really compelling, rich, yeah, they're really pretty. You know, sat highly saturated images. Uh, which look great. And so that's the same sort of thing you want here. You want to make sure that the entire process is appealing. Um, similarly, you want to make sure that the app works on every image in the gallery um, and at the same time works on devices without the camera. So for most of these apps, they allow you to add effects both to live photos on the camera and to things you already have on your phone. And so I want that to work on anything I can pick from uh, the Picasso gallery or from the phone gallery. And similarly, I wanted to work on my Galaxy Nexus. Uh, oh, sorry, on my Nexus 7. Even though it has no rear-facing camera, I'm not going to use it to take photos. But mm -hmm. I have all of my Picasso gallery uh, images synced to it. So maybe I want to you know, apply all these filters on a bigger screen. It or, should let me do that. Or you want to just browse your friend's photos. Yeah, exactly. yeah I think that that's actually one, really of the, one of the biggest problems that we had when we introduced Nexus 7 um, was photography apps. 
that mm. just assumed that if you didn't have a camera, you wouldn't be interested in a photo app, and that's just right. not true. Exactly. Um, and obviously, you want to have the uh, standard and some unique hipster filters, which I think most of the apps um, which we looked at today actually managed to do. To me, it's uh, it's not just about hipster filters. It's about ways to make the photo look good. So mm. even if you have really unique filters, one thing that I think the most successful apps do is a little bit of automatic tweaking mm. behind the scenes, maybe even without telling the user, just a the, you know, little bit of auto level, of auto white balance to, to try and make the photos look good. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. We all know that um, we're not expecting to be able to take great photos with our camera phones off the bat. You know, it's not an SLR. You can't tweak all of your manual settings and get it just so. So you're looking to concentrate on making sure you're getting a good shot, good angles, good, uh, good framing, all that sort of stuff, and then having the software help you make it look like something uh, that really represents it well. Absolutely. Um, so let's give you some tips. So uh, the first, first tip here is on using the camera. So you've got two options here, uh, which we saw both of, which is either an app which uses the, a completely custom uh, UI, which is what uh, Camera Zoom FX have done here. So you get, that, um, you, know, you get that completely custom camera user interface, which I can't find. Let's see. Save and close. Again, save button. So here, you've got the, the completely custom uh, camera user interface. And I think the first app that we looked at, uh, IME. By the way, I think that um, when, where we're seeing save, the correct verb to use is, uh, is done. I guess that's not a verb, but that's the, that's the label you should be using. Because there is a case for, for having this intermediate. Like, we've talked about this with alarm apps. There is an intermediate stage where you are working on something and you don't really feel complete. You don't mm. feel like, you know, when I'm setting my alarm, I'm doing the hours, I haven't done the minutes yet. If it just, you know, if I got a phone call then and my alarm got saved in that state, that would not make me happy. Yeah. Um, likewise, when I'm applying filters and doing a lot of tweaking, um, you want to have sort of a commit step, mm. but you shouldn't call it save. No. Because um, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, you should be saving as you go along. Absolutely. <laughs> um, because even though you, even though the user hasn't committed, they still don't want to lose work. Mm -hmm. um, but you do want to get to a, a point where you can roll back, essentially. Yeah, and particularly when you're applying filters like this, it's all logical operations. It's all maths, right? Right. And so while you don't want to have to keep, you know, each of those operations for every photo, once you're done, you're done. But in terms of being able to save your progress, even before you permanently alter the image, you can just keep a track of exactly which effects, which filters have been applied, save that, yeah. and then you can always reapply it if, if they uh, come back to the app after your process has been killed. Right. So you should always be prepared for interruptions, even uh, interruptions that happen at a very inconvenient time for you. Absolutely. Uh, but you should never ask the user to manage storage or to, to do anything but commit an action that's already in progress. Exactly. The only time you want to surprise a user is with delight, not with annoyance. Absolutely. Um, so this is I mean, You can see when you, uh, when you hit their camera button, um, it goes to the, basically to the built-in camera. Um, mm -hmm. So this is using all of the functionality that you would have on the standard um, you know, built-in camera app. And then you can take a photo, and then you know, it lets you retake it or cancel it or whatever you want to do. So. Um, so that's your two approaches, and both of those are described uh, in the link down there uh, in the camera topic of the Android, uh, Android Developer Guides. Um, and so they will tell you how to use both approaches. Uh, let's have a look. So the, uh, the other thing we talked about was conforming to the design guide. Um, and so again, we kind of have a few different approaches here with these apps. I think they've pretty much all, except for Glimmer, um, done some form of sort of custom user interface. Yep, and I think that's I think that's all right in this circumstance. It kind of makes sense, you know. You have a particular ethos, a design ethos, which you want to be consistent with on these apps. There are a few little bits and pieces that I mean. I think it's probably my favorite uh, look and feel, and that it feels the most consistent, the most strongly branded, and they've done a decent job. You know, they need to get rid of the legacy menu button down here. They need to make the draw conform to our new uh, guidelines. The search here, you should probably be using the. See, this is a little weird here where it goes off into its own search. Mm -hmm. This should really just be using a standard action bus yeah, That's search. always annoying, yeah. yeah. But so that I, I think, you know, it, to, to a certain extent, yeah. that's, that's our fault, right? These guys yeah. have, have obviously tried to mimic the action bar pattern. Mm -hmm. But uh, since our action bar support library is still not done, uh, it makes it hard. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's you know, definitely something to keep in mind and something to look for. It's, you know, 
Where have you seen sort of these standard patterns? And I have to admit, we uh, tend to have a different view on what a standard pattern is based on the fact that we're always using the latest versions of the phones and the operating systems. So that is true. For us, it's like, well, I've seen that the appropriate search action bar thing for like a year. Why is it taking people so long? <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, bear with us. But uh, particularly, you know, for these guys and for other people, sort of implementing those sorts of patterns, um, you know, you want search to be simple. It's kind of the key element here. Uh, right now, search is one, two, three, Yikes. type four. Well, and you know what's terrible to too is that it, it even looks like you should be able to type into that, yeah, right? I mean, the, this it's looks the faux like faux action yeah. bar, faux search bar. Mean, horrible. Yeah, and so uh. you know, if you you know, if you take the alternative approach, um, you know, based on the the standard sort of action bar version, is that you will have one button here, and that'll expand, and then you type, and then you hit enter, and you're done. So it's sort of only a couple of actions, and you straight away have it. Um, and if you do it that way, it will build your search into you know a bunch of ways, um, you know, which will make it easy for you to uh, to leverage that across the system. Yeah. Once again, I, I think the the feel that I get from this app is that it had some good people behind it, mm, yeah, um, some really good design, and they ran out of time. And I could tell you exactly where <laughs> on every piece of the UI exactly where they ran out of time and decided, screw it, we're going to ship anyway. <laughs> that may well be the case. And in fact, mm -hmm. um, you know, we got. Uh, I think a fair amount of good response from um, the Developer Strike Back show uh, just yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to invite the guys from uh, IME to uh, to join us next Thursday and see if they can uh, give us a bit of feedback on exactly at which point they got to before they decided they had to ship it. Yeah, you know what? Shipping stuff before it's done is for Microsoft program managers. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Um, all right. So is there? I think all of the apps look pretty good. So that's uh, I think something which was custom designed but looked pretty good. I, I, I should mention by the way that I did work for Microsoft. Yeah. I'm not just slagging <laughs> off. Slagging off the a competitor for fun. Yeah. No, you've been yeah. there. You've done that job. That's you've right. You've been that guy. Yep. Um, all right. And so this is kind of the other approach. Um, so you're looking at camera uh, camera effects here, and that again is totally custom. But I feel like here. It's not really adding to it. It makes it a little bit harder to navigate, harder to understand what's going on, and for not a huge amount of gain. This doesn't look incredible. It makes Those me touch go, targets are tiny. Tiny, tiny touch yeah, targets. Yeah, they're really, really difficult to use. So yeah, you basically this is a this is a performance disimprovement. Exactly. This is going to make it harder for people to to do. I mean, basically, if you've got an app like this, the intention is going to be that they use this instead of their camera app. Um, right. So every time they want to take a photo, it's going to be with this, um, including from within other apps. Yeah. So you need to make it at least as easy to use um, as, as feature complete as the built-in camera app, which can be tricky. Um, but in terms of UI here in particular, you want to try and make sure that it is easy to use and certainly not harder and slower to use. Yeah, and again, can't emphasize this enough, especially for apps like camera, cameras, voice recorders, the timers, anytime that you're doing something where you may not actually be looking at the screen closely, uh, or you may not be concentrating on the UI, you, it's absolutely critical that you test on some of these newer devices that have no hard buttons. Because if you look at the camera, for, were, were we on PixArt? Uh, we were on a camera effects. Uh, camera camera effects, sorry. Uh, if I'm taking a picture, what am I going to hit? What what button am I going to hit when I when I try and take that picture? It's going to be uh, sorry we're uh, apparently getting boss man stopping by here. <laughs> it's very strange things happening in the corner of our eyes. A lot of people. Yeah. Quite sure of why? Oh hi! I have no idea who you are. Okay, cool. Uh, let's let's move on. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to point <laughs> out was around. Uh, something which you described earlier, so the hipster filters. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a bunch of ways you can do this. It's all basically maths, and uh, Android actually has a pretty good tool for making maths work quickly, uh, and that is RenderScript. Right. Um, and so actually, Jeff Sharkey gave a great presentation at I/O this year, which included a big section on how to use RenderScript to perform com complicated uh, computational mathematics. And in fact, the example he gave was being able to start creating hipster filters. Yep. Um, so and, and in fact, I, uh, we have a library of them. Indeed, so. indeed. Yeah. Um, so that ch check this out, and uh, and that will sort of help you to be able to get those standard things and give you the the right processes to be able to create your own more interesting and innovative uh, filters as well. 
there's also some great resources out there if you're interested in GPU accelerating. Uh, RenderScript will actually use the GPU in, in some, some circumstances, but you're always better off just using OpenGL if it's something that the GPU mm -hmm. can handle all by itself. So one of those two, or if you absolutely must, drop into C and, and use Neon, but that's, that, is, that should be your last resort. And the reason it should be your last resort is because uh, there is currently Intel phones on the market, there's MIPS phones on the market. Mm -hmm. You can't guarantee that you're going to be running on an ARM device. Uh, you could this year, next year, it's anybody's game. Yeah. I think that's one of the advantages of something like RenderScript is that it really does all of that for you. So it's going to figure exactly. out the right processor uh, in infrastructure to take advantage of Yeah, you know, uh, you know who wrote RenderScript is the guys we hired from NVIDIA. They were on the CUDA team. So there you go. they know their stuff. All right. Brilliant. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, the, uh, the next piece of advice was uh, around supporting Picasso. So, uh, I do have, as I think most of these apps did. I think there was one which didn't. I'll have to refresh my memory with Well, now by Picasso, we're, we're talking about just in general. Exactly. Basically, anything which comes up in the gallery is something that you can pick to apply a filter to. I expect that to work. Um, right. So I expect to, to be able to, uh, to apply that, um, that filter to any image which comes back. Now, so would it be correct to say then we, what we really want to do is support image providers? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Any image provider which can end up in my gallery. Yeah. Right. Because you know this isn't just about Picasso. Picasso is sort of the, the default because it ships with the device. Mm -hmm. um, but we encourage everybody to make image providers, and yeah, and uh, many OEMs do. We don't actually ship a, a Facebook image provider as mm -hmm. part of Android, uh, but many of the different OEMs, uh, you know, Samsung, Motorola, they have their their own builds, and they have mm. a Facebook image provider. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, Flickr image provider, et cetera, et cetera. So you really want to be able to work with that so that the user doesn't see something in the gallery, uh, see something that their phone is seamlessly offering without saying, oh, this is special because it came from service private or why. Exactly. You, you see it all in a big list. And then if you select one and it doesn't work, people are just going to get frustrated by your app. Exactly. And so that's what you want to get away from. Now, it turns out this is. Uh, not entirely a trivial problem, so you really need to be uh, to look at the URLs or URIs which you get back. Um, you know, when when you do the picking action, um, I had a quick look online. Uh, it turns out we don't have a great um, document on how to do this across sort of the different versions, um, which is something we should do. So I'm going to put that to our writing team to see if we can get something put together. In the meantime, I did found this blog post. I haven't um, you know validated it in detail. Uh, it did look like it uh, was suggesting the right things. Uh, so you may want to check that out, and that uh, will give you an idea of, uh, of the right way to do that, for, for Picasso at least. Excellent. See, now the lack of transparency is going to bite us. Yeah, it is. <laughs> mm. uh, the other thing uh, which we mentioned as well is we want these apps to work on all devices. Um, now, it turns out after their latest updates, all of these apps did. When I tested them last, last night, a couple uh, did not appear to be installable on my Nexus 7, but this morning they did. So. Uh, Thank All you right. to, to those apps which pushed out an update late last night to make that happen. Um, but this, uh, this link below will take you to a blog post which will tell you exactly how to make sure that your app does work on devices if you don't have a back-facing camera. Now, see, here's where we missed the QR code. Well, that's true. It's all a learning curve. Uh, next week. Next week, exactly. Um, so definitely do, do keep that in mind. And so the reason why this is particularly important for cameras is because um, you know, there was an assumption in the very, very, very early days of Android that every device would have a camera. It was part of mm -hmm. the compatibility test suite. Um, and since that has you know, gradually relaxed over time to give uh, more opportunities for differences in hardware, we have had to maintain that assumption that if you are asking for a camera permission, that that must mean that you need a camera for the device. Um, and that's no longer the case. And so you have to explicitly say, hey, I know that I have asked for the permission to use the camera, but even if the camera isn't there, that's fine. I'm still happy to run. Right. You need to mark that optional in your manifest. And in addition, um, one thing that I personally find very confusing, and I think maybe other people do too, is remember that camera in this case means a rear-facing camera. Mm. A front-facing camera is something completely different, yeah, that's which totally is not a camera. String. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's Front-facing camera, not camera. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I know this, a lot of this stuff is going to seem weird and arbitrary, but it's uh, it's really just there to ensure backwards compatibility. Um, so where beforehand camera meant rear-facing camera, it just didn't say that it meant rear-facing camera. And we can't change the string because that will break all of the apps which have made that assumption beforehand. Um, so it can get a little bit confusing, but that's why backwards compatibility is no joke. 
So, uh, okay, so that's basically all of the things uh, in terms of prescriptions and the advice there. So uh, we've got a couple of minutes because the next well, show is starting. Yeah, we're doing for great. I thought hour. we I thought we were doing an hour today. Oh, we are. We've got. I mean, officially, we've an got hour, eight right? minutes. All right. Well, let's get if on to the recap then. If you think we're going to finish then. off uh, in less than eight minutes, then uh, I think you're sorely mistaken. Oh, lightning round! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this is the prescription. So we just looked at each of these in more detail. And so let's take a look at each of the apps uh, specifically and see how many of these they uh, they managed to do. Today, I have not used green as a, a way of saying that they've done it. I've left it in blue so that it doesn't disappear into our background. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, this is our first app. I not that that was am. a problem, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, but it was hard to see that that meant good because it could mm. be any color based on whatever was behind it. Quite true. Uh, All right. So what they did uh, what they did really well here, they uh, offered the standard and unique hipster filters. Uh, they have the community of photography, which was really easy and fun to browse through. And it works on devices without cameras, so you can just enjoy looking at photos on whatever device you happen to have. Uh, what they didn't do uh, was support every image in the gallery. So this was the app where when I clicked through to try and apply a filter to something from my gallery, which is all stuck in Picasa, I got the, I can't access this image. So that would be uh, probably the number one tip for these guys would be, please uh, do make sure that works. Um, and we're happy to, to help um, provide the information you need to make that happen. Um, and you know it does look great without contradicting the design guide. I gave that one a yellow just because you know like, there's a couple of little things: the search bar, the draw pattern, the the uh, menu button, those sorts of things. <coughs> well, they they re-implemented the action bar, which is always tricky because yeah. you're going to get something wrong, and even if you get it perfectly right, you're going to get broken by the next version. So hopefully they can uh, move over to you know action bar Sherlock or app, action bar app compat and start using something that, that Google's supporting directly, and that'll make their, uh, their app easier to maintain, I think. Exactly. So uh, I think this was a great app. I really <coughs> like the look yeah. of it. Um, I can see why it's so popular. Uh, I think if you add that support for Picasa or for generic um, images in the gallery, then I think you've, you're onto a real winner. Uh, second app we looked at was uh, Pixar. Again, so this ticked almost all of the boxes. It supports every image. It offers the standard and unique hipster filters. You've got the community stuff there. Works on devices without cameras, so it's it's pretty good. Um, again, I, I gave it a, a yellow against the design guide. Um, you know, in this case, they've done the uh, they've done the action bar correctly. They've got the search filters and everything else. Um, I think where I got a little more concerned was around things like the camera, which again they've got the custom UI. It doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be adding a lot. And, and the shutter button is not only tiny, but directly next to the home button, yeah. where my <laughs> thumb will very easily slide very, over and very hit that. Very easy yeah, to hit. But very bad idea. Um, so that's you know that's a concern. And I also found that once uh, once I started sort of tunneling into this app a little bit more, it started to get a little more difficult to navigate, a little harder to understand what the navigation patterns were, what some of the usability stuff was. So they've done a really good job on the front page. Mm -hmm. But it sort of starts to go downhill a little bit after that, uh, once you navigate past that first home screen view page. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I will say that they did a great job on their image list. They look Absolutely. really, really pretty. That's, uh, that's a great example of the right way to do that. So uh, yeah, nicely done. Absolutely. Um, third app was Glimmer. So this was the, uh, the, the Flickr viewer. So obviously, that gets red dots for anything to do with uh, applying filters, because that's not what this app does. Yeah, that's a little unfair. I think. Yeah, I was going to abstain. Maybe it should, maybe it should be a black it. dot. It sh well, it should a just, white dot. It should just remove just them, right? right. Just get them out of there, because it's not really appropriate. But it does, it does look great. It's great looking UI. Um, it's all about the community of, uh, of photographers. It works on any device. So you know, again, it's a much more simple app than some of the others we looked at today. But they've gone done a really good job with what they've Absolutely. got. Absolutely. All right. And uh, and last off, uh, we looked at camera zoom FX. Uh, so this didn't have the community of photography. Didn't have that ability to see other photos that people have taken with the great app. And I don't know. I like it if, if for no other reason than it shows you what's possible uh, with a camera phone and with their app. So it's kind of great advertising for your own app if you uh, if you have that in there. And similarly, the the design guide issues were a little bit questionable in terms of how much value are you adding by creating this new skin uh, for your um, for your camera. Um, you know, really small icons, a little bit blurry. So I think they can do a little bit there to really um, really make it a, a much better app. Mm -hmm. So that's all. That's the uh, that's all we wanted to look at in terms of apps today. We've yep. got I think three or four minutes uh, left to go, which is nice. Um, we are going to uh, pass on each of the apps we've looked at today to the guys uh, to Roman, Nick, and Adam to look at in Android Design and Action on uh, Tuesday at ten thirty. So definitely check that out. I'm not sure which apps they're planning to look on look at today, but it'll be amongst those four. 
Um, and keep an eye on the Android Developers Plus page, and we'll announce exactly uh, which apps those are, hopefully later today. Absolutely. Once again, join us next Thursday when developers strike back against uh, both Reto, myself, and Roman and his crew. Uh, see what they think of the suggestions and criticisms and potentially new designs yeah, that we've suggested to them. Um, so make sure if you are one of the developers we talked about today, uh, do make sure we have a way to get in contact with you so we can invite you to the show. And uh, if you are one of our viewers and have questions for the developers, again, let us know uh, in the comments to the events, um, to the G Plus event, and we'll be sure to put those questions to the developers when we have them uh, live via Hangout in the studio. Now, if you're a game developer, or you like games, or you like beer, or you're bedridden and just have nothing else to do, uh, don't forget that the Friday Games Review is happening again today and has also moved to another time. We're doing that at noon Pacific, uh, so in just about half an hour. And Daniel Galpin and myself Excellent. be doing that. I'll change from my lab coat into my, my hoodie. <laughs> and we'll get down, we'll get jiggy, we'll do game stuff. I'm, I'm concerned that you went the Red Bull during the wrong show. You think maybe? <laughs> I think maybe you did. Or maybe that's when the Mountain Dew's you coming don't, out, I don't know. You, you don't even know. I'm like, I'm kicking it Elvis style, all oh, right? Wow. This is the, you got to get it's, right yeah, in sure. the middle. Yeah. Wow. All right, nice. Um, I think if you guys are going to match levels, I think uh, it's less about getting a Red Bull for yourself and maybe getting a Valium. <laughs> That's that true. That might be true. That might be yeah, a, that might we'll be a win. see. Yeah. Um, All right. That's pretty much it for for uh, for us. We are going to look at uh, travel booking and planning apps uh, next week in the App Clinic. Absolutely right. The, we're getting ready for the holidays, so we figure everybody travels during the holiday, either pretty to much. be with family or to get away from family. <laughs> so true that. It's about time to start booking those flights. We're going to look at booking apps, mm -hmm. and then later on, we're going to look at travel apps, as in apps to help you when you're on the road. So exactly. make sure so, you get that uh, right. So your currency converters, et cetera, later. Um, for, tomorrow, for, for next week, we want to have apps which uh, help you make bookings, help you figure out where to go, those sorts of things. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, definitely give us your suggestions in the moderator page and tune in at the same time as this week, next week. This is going to be the new time, unless it turns out that we've been talking to an audience of three when we may reconsider. Uh, that's pretty much it from us. Um, thank you very much for, for joining us uh, at the uh, new time. And, uh, and thank you for everyone who nominated apps and voted for them. Without that, we would have a pretty boring show, or at least perhaps more boring than it already is. All right. Uh, my name's Red Meyer. I'm Ian E. Lewis. And we will see you all next week. See ya.